Containers are awesome. They exist to basically do a job, to run a service, give us access to an application, and provide some sort of value add to us on our network or for our company. Containers are a great technology that you can use for all kinds of use cases, but how do you actually access an application that's running inside a container? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes, and they include all of the popular distributions, such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and get this, also Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux cloud server provider that allows you to tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You can use it to host a blog, set up a VPN server, a Minecraft server, or you could do what I did and set up a website for your YouTube channel because the official website for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. And Linode offers 24x7, 365 support regardless of plan size, so you can get live help from a real person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 in credit towards a new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. Alright, so let's go ahead and get right into it. For this particular video, I've decided to have you guys run a different container. We were running the Ubuntu container for most of this series so far. Let's run a different one now. So for this example, I will execute docker run, and then the name of the container image that I want to use is nginx, just like that, and then I will press enter. And as you can see here, the shell is kind of just hanging here. It didn't go back to the command prompt at all, and this container appears to be doing something. Now by looking at the output, we can see that it's attempting to run an entry point command. An entry point command, if you didn't already know, is a command in a container that is executed automatically. And since that command is executed automatically, it doesn't return us back to our shell because it's technically still running. Nginx is a very popular proxy and web server application, and it's actually running Nginx in the background, but honestly, at the moment, this container is completely useless to us because we can't even access it because we can't access an application by default via TCP IP when it's running inside a container. So essentially we have a web server running inside a container with no way to actually access it and it's holding our shell so we can't even go back to the command prompt either. But like always we could just simply press control C and then that does take us back to the command prompt. And now that we have exited the container it's obviously not running anymore. So what we've done is we actually ran this command right here and it executed the entry point command that was in the image that it was instructed to run and then it just kept the shell open. So let's change this command a bit so that it could be a lot more useful. So I'm going to add dash IT which you should know from a previous video that activates interactive mode and then dash D activates daemon mode which basically sends the container to the background as soon as it runs so that way it's not going to actually steal our shell. What we also want to run is dash P and then 8080 colon 80 just like that and now we have the entire command that we're about to run so you already know what docker run does that runs a container if the image for that container is not available locally it'll go ahead and download it and then it'll create and run a container from that image dash it is interactive mode dash d is daemon mode sends it to the background but what's this one dash p well if you already know a bit about networking you could probably guess that dash P stands for port. We have port 8080 right here, colon, port 80. So Nginx, just like Apache and others that provide a web server service, they run on port 80 by default. 
So the nginx container is going to start nginx as soon as the container starts, which means that we have an nginx process inside the container that is listening for connections on port 80. But by default, ports that are open inside a container are not accessible outside of the container for security purposes. We definitely don't want everything to be externally available by default. If we need to be able to access a port that's inside a container, we need to create a way to actually access the port in that container or create a port mapping from a local port on the host system that's running Docker to the port inside the container that the application is listening on. In our case, port 8080, we are opening that up on our actual host system that's running Docker and we're going to map that to port 80 that is inside the container. So let's run this and see what happens. And then if we run Docker PS, of course we see that the container is running. It's based on the Nginx image, and here's the container ID. And that's great, it's running, which is pretty cool. But what can we actually do with it? So what I could do is type IP space A to get the IP address of my host system here. If you are running a different operating system, such as macOS, that's going to be a bit different. You can actually run ifconfig on macOS to get your IP address if you don't already know it. And on Ubuntu and most Linux distributions nowadays, the full command is IP space ADDR show. But we can simplify that all the way down to IPA, which is what I do out of habit actually. So I'll press enter here. And I'm not going to go over all of this output here, but what I'm interested in is the IP address for my host system, if it's not my local system, in this case it is. If you are running Docker on a remote server, like a VM for example, that is running in a virtualization stack, You'll definitely need this IP address, but if I go to a different workspace here, and then I can open up a browser. And then what I can do is paste in the IP address of the host that is running Docker, and then colon 8080, just like that. I'll press enter, and I get this message, welcome to Nginx. So what we're seeing here is a web page that is being served by Nginx, which is running inside of a container. That's pretty cool. So now we are actually seeing an example of accessing an application that is running inside a container and every single computer on my network that is able to route to this IP address is also going to be able to access this container. So already, if you want to set up, for example, a website on your local area network, you can already do that with this right here. And because Docker is actually running locally on my laptop, I can simply change the IP address to localhost same thing. As you can see here, I'm connected to the default web page for Nginx. Now back in my terminal, let's explore a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually run docker ps, and there is our container. I'm going to stop it. And now it's stopped. So here's the command that we use to actually start that Nginx container, and I'm going to add a new option to it. And right here, I'm going to do dash dash restart, and then unless stopped, I'll press enter, just like before it's running. And we can see that the container still works. I just refresh the page, so we're still good there. And I know it's still running because if I run Docker PS, we actually see it right there. So if I actually attach to that container, I don't actually have a shell or a command shell or anything like that. That doesn't actually matter. I'm going to just press control C to break out of the container. And we see here that the container is still running. So this restart unless stopped option is very useful when we have a container that might be serving a very important web page for our network. You definitely want that to be available. The restart unless stopped option that I've added here is a really good idea to keep that going. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to actually create your own images, which is actually going to make this content go full circle because at that point, you'll be able to actually save changes to your containers and you'll have a brand new image that you can use to start a container with all of the changes that you want. So there you go. I hope this series so far has been very helpful in teaching you guys the basics of Docker. And I'm going to teach you even more about Docker in the next video. We're going to cover Docker images, how to create your very own image for your containers. And I can't wait to dive into it. So that video is on YouTube already, and I'll meet you there.